Hello, okay, so this is actually a Power Query challenge and I'm going to show you how you would solve it uh, in SQL. So we're trying to transform this table into this table. So as I mentioned in a different video, we're essentially collapsing these values into these uh, value cells and we're adding column totals, row totals, and a grand total. This is pretty easy in something like Power Query it's doable in SQL, but it's certainly not something you would normally do, but nevertheless, it uses some interesting techniques. So I am, I'm just gonna walk through how you would do it in SQL. So again, we're transforming this into this. All right, so I have created the initial table here, and I've called it a table called source, and you can see here it's got the item column, and then uh, each column represents uh, a month. So this is October of 21, November of 21, and this is February of 22, and so on. So in order to work with this more easily, I'm going to follow the same steps that I did in Power Query, which is I'm going to unpivot the columns, then add the totals, and then pivot the columns. So uh, there is a handy unpivot operator in SQL, and um, I'll just show you very quickly how that works. So first we, uh, we need an outer query. And the outer query, you list the columns that you want to see in the output. So I want to see um, item and then year, month, and then I want to see a column called raw value. And you have a subquery where you get your source data from. And I'm just going to call that P and then you use this unpivot operator and the unpivot operator is followed by parentheses and you say you want unvisit unpivot um, the column raw value which will contain the values from the unpivot operation for the year months year month in and then you have a list of the columns from the original table so let's just try it with two um, 202111 so and then we we need to give that subquery a name as well so just to explain this this is the source data which produces this result set here these are the columns that i want in the output i want item year month which is going to be values from these column headers okay and then raw value, which is the value from these cells here. The way the unpivot operator works is that you say, okay, I want in the, in the column raw value for the year months in these columns, unpivot the data. So it's a bit difficult to, to explain, to be honest, but if I just show you what it does, you can see that it's unpivoted those two columns into year month and the values from those columns into raw value. So um, it's a bit awkward, to be honest. I don't really like unpivot. Um, and the main reason I don't like it is that you have to hard type the column names into this in statement. Um, so I, I would not do this uh, and I would not type them out like that. I would, I would create a dynamic solution because the number of columns in this source table might change. So let's try and tr create a dynamic solution. So the first thing we can note is that um, we can get the column name from any table in SQL uh, from information schema dot columns. And just to show you, so that's the column name from all the from the table, the source table. So we want to get the year month columns so we don't want the item column so that's that's the year month columns and I've put double quotes here but you can just as well uh, put square brackets around it now it works the same way and when since this unfortunate uh, source table has numeric column names, 
In SQL Server, you need to put double quotes or the square brackets around numeric column names. Um, and an easy way to do that is actually using the quote name function. The quote name function will prepare a string or a, a character string as, um, as a column name or an object name for a query. So if I put quote name around column name, you can see I've got uh, square brackets around these column names now. The last thing that remains to be done with this is to use string ag, which is uh, a text concatenation over rows function to join them together. So now that we have string ag around it, we have a single value, which is a comma separated list of the year month column names. And essentially we're just going to need to insert that value in here. Um, and of course, it's never that simple. So these are going to be the calls. And we are going to actually have to need to use, we're going to need to use um, dynamic SQL here. So we're going to build a SQL statement, which concatenates the calls um, with this SQL up here. So let's, uh, Let's first of all, let's just try selecting it. And if we do from and have this information schema query as, as the from table in this query, um, we'll just call it information schema. Oh, no, let's just call it C. Um, now running that, it has given us a proper SQL statement. So this is actually a pivot SQL statement. And if I was to uh, copy this, though it looks a bit awkward, if I copy it and run it, it uh, gives us this, this data set, which is all of the pivoted um, columns. They've all been pivoted and that's the entire data set that we want to add subtotals to. So, uh, but we don't want to copy and paste and, and work that way. What we want to do is uh, take the output of this query and insert it into a temp table that we can then use in other operations. So let's let's do that now. First, um, we need a temp table to begin with. Uh, let's try, first we want drop table if exists and we'll call it unpivot. And then we will create table unpivot, which will have item, which is a uh, single character, bar chart one. And we're going to have year month, which is bar chart six, because there's four, four um, characters for the year and two for the month. And then we want raw value, which is an int. And we're going to change this so that it is using insert into unpivot item year month raw value. So uh, we will, it will create the table, I drop the table if it exists to make sure that we can run this repeatedly. And then it will create the table in the structure that we want. And then it will insert the results from this uh, dynamic SQL into the unpivot table. And if all that works as expected, we should then be able to select star from unpivot. So let's just run all of it and hopefully it will do what we want. Mm, what's gone wrong now? Oh, <laughs> okay, silly me. Um, you can't just run the, the dynamic SQL, you need to execute it. So we use the exec function for that and we put, uh, we put a parameter in there. Um, sorry, a, a variable. So let's declare a SQL variable, which uh, best practice is just uh, nvarchar4000 for that because that's as long as it can be. And we want to have uh, select the variable name equal to the dynamic SQL that's produced by this. So this select statement will now put the dynamic SQL in that variable and this will then execute it and we will then we need to, we will then be able to select from the query. Should have done this in the first place, but here we are. So <clears throat> we've now selected from unpivot and we've got all the data that we need to work with. So that's a bit of a bit of around the houses work there, but, um, like I said, I don't really like this unpivot operator. It's a bit awkward unpivoting stuff in SQL. Um, 
you'd be better off doing it in some other technology, but there, there you go, that's how it works. Okay, so um, the next step, so that's step one. The step one is to unpivot the data. The next step is to uh, add the totals. So the first thing I'm going to do is create a, a CTE, uh, and I'm gonna call the CTE called uh, source. <clears throat> and just to make things easier to work with in the, in the long run, I'm gonna select item and then I'm going to get the, the year from the year month column, which is the first four characters as year. And I'm going to get the uh, raw value from um, pivot. And of course, I'm not putting, I'm not capitalizing everything sensibly here, but of course you would do better in your own work. Um, so that gives us the, let's just do select star from source. Let's see what that gives us in fact. So now we've just got the year and the raw value. <coughs> we actually need to sum. So let's say item year and sum of raw value as sum value. And we will group by item and year. So let's see what that looks like, step by step, here we go. So we've summed and we've got the sum of the value by year for item A, for item B and so on. Okay, that's great. Now to add subtotals, there's many, many ways that you can do this and I've got a much longer video talking about uh, three different ways that you can do this, but the, the way that I'm gonna use today is uh, grouping sets. So grouping sets comes in the group by clause and we use grouping sets and then a set of parentheses and then a list of uh, tuples which describe by which fields you want to group the data. So I want the data that we've got on the screen at the moment. So that's grouping by item year. I also want to group only by item to get the sum of totals, sum of the raw value by item. I want to have another grouping set where I'm just grouping by year to get the sum of the raw value by year. That's the, uh, it's going to be the column totals. This is the row totals, this is the column totals. And for the grand total, um, we just put an empty parentheses and that sums all of the rows. So grouping sets, you have a single set of parentheses and then when you, within the parentheses, you have a um, comma separated list of tuples containing the field names you want to group by. So this is a group by that produces this output. This is a group by that sums the data by item. This is a group by that sums the data by year. And this is a group by that produces the grand total. So to show you that now, you can see it has added uh, the sum of 2021 is 105 and the item column is null. The sum of 2022 is 163 and the item column is null. Okay, that's great. So but we don't want it to be null. Um, we want the word total in these, um, in these cells. So uh, when you're using grouping sets, it produces these null values. Um, but in order to be able to differentiate them from null values which legitimately exist in the data, you can use a function called grouping. And just to show you what that looks like, there's this function called grouping. And if I put grouping item just in this query, you can see that when, when the item column contains a null that was produced by grouping sets, the grouping function returns a one and everywhere else it returns a zero. So if there were a null in this result set that was not produced by grouping sets, it would still contain a zero and therefore we'd be able to differentiate them from one another. So because of this great grouping function, um, we can alter the way that this works and we can say case when grouping item equals one, i.e. there's a null in the item column produced by the grouping sets, then put the word total. Otherwise, put the value from the item column. Okay, so that's what that's gonna do. We now got the word total where there used to be nulls. Um, so we can obviously do that for the year column as well. <clears> 
<clears throat> okay, so now we've got totals in the year column as well. And this is the grand total, row 13, where there's a total of the items and the years, which is 268. Okay, so that is actually um, step two complete. Um, well, no, it's not. No, it's not. We need to put this, uh, the result of this, into a table that can then be pivoted back into the structure that we need. So, uh, as before, let's drop table if exists, unpivot with totals, and in SQL Server, and we can use this select columns into table name as a as a shortcut for insert. So we'll drop the table if it exists, unpivot with totals. Um, that's what we want. And then this statement will now insert this data into that temp table. And after that, we'll be able to select star from unpivot with totals. So let's just check that. Okay, so we have done that and it has selected from unpivot with totals and we've got the result here. Okay, so that, that's the end of step two. Step three is going to be to take this data and pivot it so that it looks like the output. Remember the output, this is the output. We need um, years on the columns and we need row totals, column totals and a grand total. Okay, so the next, the next step uh, uses the pivot operator. And the pivot operator works similarly to the unpivot operator, um, but it's a bit more, a bit awkward in the same way. So we we start. Let me just show you how it works first. So let's say select item, and then we would need to awkwardly list and hard code the column names. Oops that we want to see in the output. And similarly, we have a subquery where we select star from wherever our source data is, which is unpivot with totals. Um, I'll call it P again. And then we put the pivot keyword and parentheses for the pivot keyword. And we do, uh, we need to put an aggregate function around the value that we want to uh, distribute among the new columns. And of course, the value is, that we want to distribute is the sum value column from the unpivot with totals table. And we want to do that for the unique values in the year column, which are listed in this in statement. And this is the part that I don't like about it because you have to you have to hard code them into the statement. So uh, we'll just call that pivot. So to show you that that does this, uh, which actually produces the output, but of course, hard coding column names into uh, a statement like this is not that good. So we're gonna use some dynamic SQL in the same way that we did above to, uh, to build this uh, pivot statement. Okay, so the first thing to remember uh, about this statement is that we need to build a string that represents the column names. Now, of course, those column names are in the year column of the unpivot with totals table. So we can use select distinct year from unpivot with totals. And that will give us the column names and remember we want the square brackets around there so we can use quote name in SQL Server. It's probably different in other providers. And we need to be able to use string ag to produce a single value. But of course, if we're using distinct, we need to, we can't use string ag with distinct. Um, well, maybe we can, I actually don't know. Now let me try this, string ag. Can I put it around here and make it easier? It doesn't seem to like it. Um, okay, it doesn't work. So I, I didn't think it would. Uh, so we can put it uh, in a subquery instead. So we can put select string ag um, call. I'm going to call it call in a minute as calls. 
calls from, and then this is the subquery. I'm really not typing well today. This is the subquery, and this is going to be called call. And that's the thing we're going to aggregate together. Um, yeah, just put it, call it S for subquery. Bad practice. Okay. So that produces the, um, the correct column names, which can go in here and in here. So we'll do exactly what we did above, which is to create dyna dynamic SQL and concatenate the calls with that. Um, select. And we need to concatenate it here as well. Calls. Uh, and that, then that becomes from this. So from this, which I'll call C. It doesn't really matter because this is kind of a one-off thing. Okay, so that's right now. And that produces the SQL, uh, which hopefully if I copy it and paste it, it will just run. Okay, so that works. Uh, but of course we don't want to copy and paste, so we're going to do what we did before, which is to um, declare the SQL variable, rather than running the whole script again, declare the SQL variable. And in order for me to use the same name, I need to put go there for SQL Server. And uh, we will select that SQL va value into this SQL variable and execute it and executing it produces the results. We're not going to insert into a tent table this time, uh, but this will avoid us having to copy and paste. So we declare the SQL variable and then we select the dynamic SQL into the SQL variable by using uh, variable name equals and then the dynamic SQL. And then we use the exec function to execute the dynamic SQL. And you can see that by doing that, um, no copying and pasting, no hard coding of column names, we've produced the output which has the uh, column totals, the row totals, and the grand total. That is the end of the video.